Today we're going to talk about what is a power band. Right here, I have my uh, 1986 Honda CR500. Right here, I have my 1984 KTM 495. Now, there are a lot of myths about power band. Uh, one of the myths is that uh, a four stroke doesn't have a power band, and only two stroke racing dirt bikes have a power band. And that's not true. Every gasoline engine has a power band, including a lawnmower. The power band is the range of RPM for which the engine is operating most efficiently. This is the RPM range from maximum torque to maximum horsepower. The first thing we're going to talk about is what is torque. So I'm just going to show you what torque is. So we have this bolt here. You ever try to take a bolt off, you get a wrench, you put the wrench around the bolt, and you put a push a lot of force down to the wrench. And man, the bolt's really tight, you can't get it together. So you may want to say, I need more leverage. So you get a longer wrench, or you do something like this. It's a very long pipe. It's a 25 inch pipe. I just put that around the wrench, barely touch the wrench, and the bolt just turns. So why is that? Well, because you put more torque onto the bolt. Torque is a force that causes a rotation. So whenever I push down on this wrench, I'm putting torque onto this bolt. And there's two ways to put more torque onto the bolt. One, you put more force down onto the wrench, so I put all my body weight down onto it, or I increase the length of the wrench. Because torque is force multiplied by length. Torque is a force that causes a rotation. Torque is equal to force times length. So now we're going to talk about power. So here I have two engines, as I explained before. You can hear that. These new bearings. You can hear this. This one has brand new bearings. So I mentioned before that torque is a force and a length. So what do you have here? You have a length here. You have a connecting rod and you have a uh, crankshaft which spins in a circle. And the piston puts a force on the connecting rod, rotates, rotates the uh, crank, and there you have torque. Now, the output is known as power. So how do you calculate power? So how do you calculate power? Well, power is equal to revolutions per minute multiplied by torque. Horsepower is a constant defined as 33,000 foot-pounds per minute. If you want to calculate horsepower in relation to torque, it's revolutions per minute multiplied by torque divided by 5252, where 5252 is a conversion constant to horsepower. In the same manner as dividing seconds by 60 is a conversion to minutes. So now we're going to talk about how power and torque are transferred from the crankshaft all the way back to the rear wheel. In a previous video, I had talked about how the rotations of the crankshaft relate to the rear wheel and speed. Well, now we're going to talk about how torque and horsepower are related to the rear wheel. So, if you remember, we have a smaller gear on the crankshaft and we have a larger gear on the main shaft, which turns the main shaft of the transmission. This is actually the clutch. And what we do is we take the number of teeth of this bigger gear divided by the number of teeth on the gear that's actually doing the turning. So, we can end up with the gear ratio. So, for example, let's just say the gear ratio here is 2. So this little gear has to rotate around two times to turn this big gear one time. So if this gear is turning at 4,000 RPM, this gear is turning at 2,000 RPM. So we take the RPM divided by the gear ratio. Now torque is the opposite. We take torque from the crankshaft and we multiply it by the gear ratio. So torque is actually multiplied as you go through the motor. However, unlike the rotations, as this rotates two times, will always rotate this one time. Torque is not like that. Torque is not lossless. 
torque is lost as you go through due to friction as you go through the gears. So as you transfer from here to here, this is torque. If torque was five, it will be ten here. If it was lost, so it's not lost, so we lose a little bit. So we end up uh, with a little bit less torque. Now remember how I said in the um, previous video I had my Myco 490 which has a chain driven drive. That would lose less torque than a gear setup. So we're not going to go into all that. So let's calculate torque. Let's say that we had 5,000 RPM multiplied by 50 pounds of torque at the crank. This is 47 horsepower. Now our gear ratio of 2 will take 5,000 RPM divided by 2 get 2400 main shift revolutions. We'll take 50 torque, multiply it by 2 and get 100 main shaft torque. 2500 multiplied by 100 is still 47 horsepower. However, torque is not lossless. It is lost from the crank through the rear wheel. So let's say a motor has 20% loss of torque. So we're going to start with the same we had before. We have 5,000 RPM, torque of 50, and a horsepower of 47 at the crank. Now we can take 5,000 RPM and divide it by the product of all the gear ratios, the primary drive, the gear ratio, and the final drive ratio. And we get 444 rear wheel rotations. Now we take torque, which is 50, multiply it by all the, the ratios through the motor, and then multiply by 0.8 because we only get 80% of torque that we put through the motor. We end up with 450 torque at the rear wheel, which is a lot more than 50 torque. However, the total power output is reduced because we've lost 20% of our torque. So 444 multiplied by 450 divided by one horsepower is only 38 horsepower at the rear wheel. The power band plays an important role in transmission design because when you switch from gear A to gear B, if you're at the end of gear A's power band, when you switch to gear B, whatever speed is at the end of gear A, you want it to be at the beginning of the power band in gear B. So every time you shift gears, you always start at the beginning of the next power band. So in a nutshell, that is a power band. The efficient operating RPM range of a, of a motor from maximum torque to maximum horsepower. Um, as you can see, I have a 1983 KTM 495 uh, horsepower and torque graph here, and I'll display a few more. This is for a 1983 Mako 490 Spider. You can see that it has a nice low range power band, and then it drops off in the mid range, and then it hits again in the high range. This is the measurement for a uh, 1983 Honda CR480. There's basically a dyno that you can run your, your bike on to get the measurement at the rear wheel and there's other things you can, other tools that they have to measure at the crank and so forth. But uh, So this is just a basic introduction to what a power band is.